What's going on movie fans? I'm back for another review and today I'm going to be reviewing Killers of the Flower Moon. If you're not a movie fan, maybe you haven't seen it yet, but I know if you're a movie fan, you've seen this film by now. I flat out want to say Scorsese tells a story I didn't even know existed. I was very depressed when this movie was over. I'm glad I have heard this story because I think it's very important here. I was very interested once I learned what it was about. And I'm about to get into spoilers, so if you don't want this movie spoiled, I highly recommend shutting it off. I would appreciate if you go into it blind, like I did. It's much more impactful that way. Now, I have to warn anyone who is going to watch this, this can be a pretty harsh watch for sensitive people due to the subject matter it focuses on. This movie contains a lot of greed and murder and monstrosity. It'll leave anyone with tons of thoughts and feelings. You know, you'll feel compassion, care, and love for these Osage people. And you'll also be very angry because it's very tragic what happened to them. It's horrible. I thought Leonardo DiCaprio played a pretty good Dutz. He was very, it's not his usual character that he plays where he's ultra intelligent. This one, he was kind of dumb. He'd make a lot of mistakes. Robert De Niro did a good job, but he's played this character many times. He plays a real sleazy piece of crap. He was very assertive in the film. And when he would speak, he sounded like a leader who had been doing what he was doing for a long time. This might be controversial because a lot of people complain about the runtime, but I personally believe that Scorsese, he really didn't waste any minutes in this film. Every frame had a purpose. The violence and betrayal parts are filmed in a way of deep respect for the Osage people. Sometimes you feel like you're just watching a room of actors who are going to get nominated because the performances just felt so real and natural. Of course, all the sets are insane. And, you know, there's a scene where there's the whole townspeople and there's horses and Osage people all over the place. And it's just insane how many extras they had on this piece. It's mind-boggling and it just felt so real. I'm a big Leonardo DiCaprio fan. His performance kind of lost me because I'm there to watch a Scorsese film with Leonardo DiCaprio, but this movie did pull me away from those thoughts and I felt like I was watching a movie, not a Scorsese movie with Leonardo DiCaprio in it. You know, costume design, music, it was all great. I have no complaints there. It fit with the world. It did a perfect job of bringing us in as an audience to feel and see everything that happened at that time. Leonardo DiCaprio's wife, Rita, was being shown in the film when he was poisoning her. The camera never shied away from the ramifications of him poisoning his wife. We, we got to see her in her lowest moments of being sick. Just how sweaty and swollen her eyes were. And the camera would focus on these spots of her face. And I thought that was a smart move because it let you as an audience see how deathly sick these people became and how they slowly died these painful deaths. It's also disgusting because not only are we seeing this, we're going into the doctor's office and seeing Robert De Niro bribing the doctors. And then we find out the doctors were in on it. And then finally, when you get some relief, when the FBI shows up, you have a sense of relief because you're like, finally, these people are going to get in trouble, get caught for what they're doing to these women. And it's terrible because all the husbands are just sitting here poisoning their wives and getting away with it while reaping the benefits. But then the film keeps hammering away that this story was told because nothing was resolved. When this was all set and done, the FBI really didn't investigate very hard. A lot of the murders of these women and Osage people, the cases were unresolved and closed. It was just a reign of terror and they didn't even get help when they were asking for it. They've either, they then showed in the film that they paid someone to help them and they still didn't get the help they needed. And a ton of their cases were unresolved or even looked into. And most of them were just closed. So the film does a great job of that. Now, I personally believe this should have been a miniseries. I don't think a three and a half hour movie worked. This should have been a longer story. And I know Martin Scorsese has more story to tell. But it being three and a half hours in the theater, it felt torturous. It really did. You know, a three hour movie is okay because we have to calculate in the trailers, the stupid ads we're seeing in movies now. Like, why are we seeing ads? They're showing motel ads in the movie theater now, between trailers. I'm not trying to book a reservation to a fancy hotel when I'm trying to watch a film here. I don't need to see this. I pay money to go to the theater, so I don't have to watch ads, and I get to see the movie on the big screen and hear the good sound. So the movie companies need to stop showing ads in movies. We don't need them in the theater. I think this movie should have been a miniseries. 
because there's stuff that has to be implied to the audience because there's parts where Robert De Niro has to tell Leonardo DiCaprio's character to kill Rita three different times. And I felt like that was done because of the runtime. He's asked three different times between 30 minute increments. It's like, okay, I, I get it. I know Scorsese probably has a longer cut and I personally believe this story is important to be told. And I wish it was a miniseries. I think more people would have liked it. People wouldn't have complained because the big gripe of this movie and the drama is, uh, it was boring, it was too long. I don't think the story's boring. I just think three and a half hours is too much time to be sitting down in a chair you know when you can't get up and go to the bathroom or you'll miss an important plot detail i just think in a theater three hours is kind of where they should keep it at unless you do an intermission that's like five minutes i'm not against them doing intermissions i don't think movies that are two hours or two and a half hours should get an intermission i think movies that are three hours should play two hours ten minute intermission play the last hour we're probably never going to go back to intermissions this movie did not perform as well as it could have and I know there's more story to tell. And I know Scorsese has tons more footage. Well, this movie could have been six or seven hours. So I think the movie kind of failed in that perspective. So just bring back the intermissions. Besides that, the movie is great. It does get slow in a few parts. But as I said, I think the movie needed to be flushed out and be longer than it is. Talking six hours here. But I think since Scorsese was forced to jam so much into three and a half hours, it felt a little sluggish and slow in a lot of parts. They had to tell so much story in between the good stuff. You weren't able to really craft it and keep it exciting for the whole runtime. You know, it's three and a half hours to hold someone's attention is a hard task to pull off even for Scorsese. I would expect to see a ton of noms at the Academy Awards for this film. Wouldn't be surprised if it takes home four. Therefore, I recommend seeing this movie. I really do. I think you would get a lot out of it. It's got a great story. I guarantee you have not heard about this story before. If you have, and it will make you sad for watching it, I don't recommend watching it. Because I felt really icky and gross when it was over. I was like, I feel really bad for the Osage people. I cannot believe they dealt with all this crap. It is horrible what they dealt with. It truly is. And I'm glad this story was told. I'm going to grade Killers of the Flower Moon a B plus. Well, that's it for my Killers of the Flower Moon review, guys. I do have more reviews coming up, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I'll catch you, you movie fans, on my next review.